Thank you very much for coming to my talk. Uh, I'm Kenichi Asukata from IIJ. Uh, today I talk about Zeppelin uh, system coffee mechanism based on binary writing. So this work is done with Hajime Tazaki, Bailey Oran, and Kente Shiguro. So the system code as a primary interface for user space program to communicate with OS kernels. Here we have a user space program, and there is a kernel. The communication between these two is done through the system code. System code hook is a mechanism to intercept the system code and redirect the execution to a user-defined hook function. So the motivation of this work is to use the system code hook mechanism to transparently apply the user space of such systems to existing applications. The reason why we speak about user space or subsystem is the performance. Essentially, they are very fast. For example, AWP is a portable network stack, and when we run this on DPDK in user space, it achieves more than five times better throughput compared to the standard Linux TCP stack. This is great, and we want to use this. So this is the motivation. Okay, but the issue is, I think, as you know, so normally, the adaptation requires the changes of a user space program to apply a specific API of a user space or subsystem. Okay, so essentially, so we need to modify the existing program, and this is uh, not nice, right? So and we want to avoid this. And if we use a user space, sorry, system call mechanism, we can do like this. So here, we don't need to modify the user space program. So this is great. Okay, so about the third issue. So actually, there's no perfect system call hook mechanism. So there are some existing ones. So for example, P-Trace, in three signaling technique, SQL user dispatch, and LDP rolls, and so on. But when we apply LWP on DPDK to an existing application using these, uh, but when we compare to LDP, sorry, LDP load, P-Trace, in three signaling, SUD, so they cause significant performance reduction. And they are rely on the kernel features. Uh, so for example, P-Trace has overhead for the process scheduling between the tracer and the tracy processes. And in C signaling, SUD has the overhead for the context manipulation for uh, signal handler. On the other hand, the period just replaces the function calls. So that's why it is fast. OK, so up to here, the so LD period looks very good. But actually, it is also not perfect. So let's think about this kind of case. So uh, there's app function. So this function treats the right system call through the right rivalry call implemented in libc. So what's done by LD period is like this. So the function call replacement. Here, the right call is linked to the user-defined right rivalry call. But let's think about this kind of case. So the programmers implement their own special write function. And they trigger the right system call in this function using the assembly code. And here, unfortunately, this is not fucked by LED field because the name of these two are different. And we see this case in GLBC quite often, for example. So in short, the existing mechanisms have significant downside. OK, they have high performance penalty or sometimes fail to fuck system calls, so they are not nice. Uh, especially the problem statement is, because of this issue, the applicability of user space of subsystems has been substantially limited, regardless of their excellent performance benefits. In this work, we present that for in a system code mechanism for x86 CPUs, and it is based on binary writing, and it is free from the drawbacks of the previous mechanism. Especially, this work addresses a challenge that is specific to uh, binary writing approaches. OK, so let me explain about the basics of binary writing approach. On x86 CPUs, syscall and syscenter are the instructions to trigger a system call. And this figure illustrates the uh, virtual memory address space. And here, we have syscall instruction. And what we wish to achieve is, OK, here we have a user-defined hook function. And we replace the syscall with something like this. And 
we want to jump this. So jump to user defined hook function. Now the question is, what should we put here? Actually, there is a challenge. So syscall and syscent are two byte instructions, but the specification for jump test instantial address already requires more than two bytes. Okay, here is the address of the user defined hook function. And if we put this value, so value of this, here, as you see, the subsequent instructions are overwritten. And if you have some program that jumps to this overwritten part, it will lead to unexpected behavior. So this is not nice, right? So because of this issue, the previous binary writing techniques could not ensure the exhaustive hooking or just overwrite the neighbor instructions. The goal of this work is to jump to a user-defined hook function using only two bytes, originally occupied syscall or syscenter. The key idea is to employ the calling convention. So it is essentially a loop that defines how to invoke a system call. So if a user space program wishes to trigger a system call, it first sets a system call number to the RARX register. And system call numbers are predefined in the kernel. For example, zero is read and one is write and two is open. Afterward, the user space program executes syscall or syscenter. Then the context is switched into the kernel, and the kernel executes a system call specified through the system call number set to the Rx register. For example, if the Rx register has zero, the kernel will execute read, and if it is one, the kernel executes write. Okay, this is the point. So when syscall or syscenter is executed, the Rx register always has a system call, system call number, and that is, between zero to around 500. So this is defined in the kernel. Okay, so what we do in that point is to replace syscall syscenter with call q asterisk percent rx. So this is the instruction. First point is this instruction is two byte. So uh, it means the neighbor instructions are not overwritten. Okay, so what's done by this instruction is to jump to the address stored in the Rx register. Okay, here we use a calling convention. After the binary rewriting, so it will be like this. When we press call queue as reads percent Rx is executed, the Rx register always has a system call number. And as I said, that instruction jumps to the address stored in the Rx register. That is, in our case, between zero to around 500. So, the replace call queue address percent rx always jumps to address zero to around 500. More precisely, it will be zero to n, and n is a maximum system call number. So we could come here. Then the next question is, how can we redirect the execution to this user-defined hook function? To do this, we put the trampling code at address zero, and in this trampling code, we fill the address range between zero to n with nop, so that the execution will fall through up to n. Then we put the call to jump to the hook function next to the last nop. So uh, now, so we could reach to the uh, reach the user defined function, user defined hook function. Okay, so this is the goal. Yes. So uh, yeah. By the way, so the name of this uh, zeppelin comes from the trampling code at address zero. So this is a basic mechanism. So one thing we need to care about is the null access termination because a buggy program may access null. So yeah, here we have buggy program accessing to null. Okay, in principle, null access has to be terminated. And normally, a page fault happens because uh, no physical memory is mapped to address zero. But this time, so we use var address zero, so the page fault doesn't happen. It means the buggy program can continue to run. Okay, question is how can we detect and terminate the buggy neural access? Okay, so for the solution, we need to think about the three types of memory access, read, write, and execute. For the solution to the uh, read and write, so we configure the transferring code as XOM, so that is execute only memory. And after this configuration, 
read or write access to the transferring code causes a fault. And this configuration could be done by the mProtect system code. And for the neural execution check, we do the check of the code address. So to do this, during the binary writing phase, we correct the addresses of replace the syscall or syscenter. OK, let's say we are in the binary writing phase. And here we have a list of replaced addresses. And this time, so we uh, address A is replaced. So in this case, this list will have A. OK, so now we move to runtime. At runtime, in the hook function, we check if the caller is one of the replaced addresses. OK, so now we are at runtime. And let's say uh, the user defined hook function is triggered through address A. Now I think we will, look, we will see like this. So the caller address is A, and A is in the list. So this is a valid access. So this is OK. Let's think about this case. So the user defined function is uh, triggered through address B. And we will see like this. OK, so the color address is B. B is not in the list. So this is an invalid, list, an invalid access. Here we stop this program. This is how we detect the neural execution. And we implemented this using bitmap, so the overhead of this check is quite small. OK, so let me report to the overhead. Uh, we measured the overhead of Zeppelin using the, uh, some by measuring the time to hook get PID system code and return dummy value. Compared to P-trace in signaling SUD, the overhead of z frame is from 28 to more than 700 times smaller. And I also checked the overhead of neural execution, neural execution check, and it was one nanosecond out of 41 nanosecond. And compared to LED payload, it has a 35 nanosecond of additional overhead. And this comes from the uh, knobs in the trumpet code. OK, let's see what happens to the applications. So we transparently apply SWP plus DPDK to my existing applications using different system call hook mechanisms. So here we have a simple HTTP server and SWP plus DPDK. And we grew these two using the system call hook mechanism. And we run the benchmark uh, using WK that fetches a 64 byte of static content. So here is the result. As you see, compared to the LED period case, Feet race in three SUD, so they cause significant performance reduction, but that point can keep the throughput up to 87%. So we did the same test using Redis, a popular key value store. Uh, we see the similar trend. So compared to LED payloads, that point can keep the throughput up to 94%. So in summary, in this work, we have presented that point, a system called mechanism for x86 CPUs. It is based on binary writing, and it is free from the drawbacks of the previous mechanism, and it keeps the performance benefit of user space of a subsystem. Uh, OK, so that's all for my presentation, and thank you very much for your listening.